We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. Doing pretty well. How are you doing? I'm not going to complain. Although, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to turn, my, I'm gonna turn my, nas my noise gate off for a second. And there we go. I do have one complaint, Jared. What's that complaint? You have collegiate chaos, and this is a sloop camp oh, episode. Oh, thank you. That's a <laughs> you know what, Kyle. That is a uh, I would call that a constructive criticism. All right. That, there well, we go. We we're down to our our last two sloop camp episodes here, Jared. Before football week, this is game week. Week one is upon us here, and we're yes, going to yes. get right going to get right into the meat of how we're going to be running our episode. So just a, a review for those who are new to listening to us here. Uh, starting, I guess, technically uh, Thursday, we will be doing our uh, sloop picks where we'll be picking against the line against some, what is it, about seven? I think it was seven, uh, yeah. seven games that are interesting that we'll pick against. Friday is our Know Your Enemy. So we do Know Your Kyle's, Enemy. If no Kyle, it's the other way around, buddy. Is it? Yeah, because because for like we have an Ohio State audience, so we want to give them as many days as possible to listen to the actual show preview, the actual okay. like Ohio State preview. All right. That's how then we did it last year, right? Am I crazy? Can, can I get one of the lore masters in the chat to confirm or deny that? Austin says yes. Right. Austin's one All of right. our lore masters. All right, then Thursday. Thursdays are Know Your Enemy. Friday is the Sloop Picks. And then Monday, we will do our uh, Scarlet and Grade episode where we will review the Buckeye game. And then Tuesday after the after week one will be uh, Collegiate Chaos where we will be doing a national overview. And then in the middle there of Wednesday, if you are a... Um, Patreon, you get a special episode. Yes. yes. Um, Thor listens. Uh, damn it, Kyle, Patreon. <laughs> Patron, Patreon. It's a Patreon or, okay, guys, the service is called Patreon. The people on the service, i.e. you guys, are patrons. Um, I've I've tried correcting Kyle on this. I know he does it every time. That's why I quit trying. I gave up. I love you, Austin. <laughs> All right, let's get into it, Jared. We we have a we have a lot to um, to cover here. So it's our annual superlatives that we do. Uh, we've done for quite a few years now. And this year's no different. So we're going to do some superlatives. But first, let's get into uh, some news before we before we uh, do the preseason superlatives. Uh, uh, I actually, Austin, I checked that myself. He's asking, is it a tradition? Um, we started it in season three. And as far as I could tell, we didn't do one in 2020 just because 2020 and the season being all fuckety. Um I think we just didn't. We just didn't. Um, yeah. But I think since we've done a superlatives episode uh, every year since season three. Lore master. I, uh, so some interesting news here, Jared. This this season is the first where you get to say Ohio Stadium. And the field having a name, it is now called Safe Light, Safe Light Field. Safe flight field at Ohio Stadium. Yes. And did that, get through the, did that go through the noise gate? I hope that went, you know what, Nomad? Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then I, to confirm, too, there's... I'm not happy. Of, we, we, we talked about it a little bit here, just rumors, but it's sounding like it's a sure thing now that... Uh, oh, no, it was announced. Or I'm sorry, you're talking about something else. Yeah, that uh, Bob will be out with a um, knee injury 
Um, he said that it's just a little nick. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Fingers crossed that it's, we'll get to see him on the field this year. All right, Kyle, let's get into our preseason superlatives. Um, if you guys don't know what a superlative is, um, it's like, you know, it, like in, sometimes in your yearbook, you get like most likely to succeed, class clown, stuff like that. Um, so that's that's what we're doing here. Um, as an example, our, our first one is most likely to be Heisman. Now, Kyle, for a lot of these, um, you can answer this both from an Ohio State perspective and or a national perspective. So just just throwing that out there, the, the some of the these like big ones, feel free to say if Ohio State this person, but nationally, I prefer this person. Um, so, yeah, Kyle Heisman, who on the Ohio State team is most likely to win the Heisman this year? Well, who's the quarterback? Yeah, I mean, that's that's. That I mean, that's that's just a. Uh, I know you said JSN Nomad. Um, the 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 only way, the only way JSN would get it, instead of McCord, I said McCord, instead of Stroud, is if McCord ends up playing a lot, and because Stroud got hurt or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, so in, so in case those passing yards get split up between two guys. Um, I just, if, if, if J if JSN has a good enough of a season to get a Heisman, that means that, uh, so did CJ Stroud and they'll give it to the quarterback. Yeah. The, the only, uh, the only other way potentially is if JSN's like the punt and kickoff returner and houses several of those, then maybe if he hits 2000, he has a chance. But here's the problem in this scenario that you guys are talking about. The Ohio State guys are splitting up all the, all the votes, which would water down because the, the Heisman votes are notoriously geographically biased. Um, so a lot of the Ohio State votes could get split up. I don't know if JSN gets 2K and Stroud only gets 44. I don't know. Listen, here's the here's the problem, Austin. Y'all are using good sound logic, which is not something that the vast majority of Heisman voters do. Yeah. I understand what you're saying, and I'm like, if you're talking like justifiably, sure. But Heisman voters. <laughs> but Heisman voters, they'll give it to the quarterback. All right. Who's your Heisman, Jared? I, I, yeah, I, Kyle, I was just arguing your point on your behalf for the past three minutes. I, yeah, CJ Stroud. All right. Who will be the most improved this year compared to last year? Most improved player. Um, I'm looking at the linebackers. Um, Eichenberg. Um, You're, you're yeah, mean, that, Austin, that, and you're wrong. You're mean and you're wrong. And it'll be someone on the defense, I would say, almost definitely. Um, I think you could also talk about Zachary Harrison here. Um, see, with, with Sawyer, Austin, or Nomad, with, with Sawyer, I feel like he's just like a freshman who isn't starting yet. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like when you're talking about... I understand. I understand, Nomad. But I feel like most of the time when you talk about most improved... Most of the time, it's an upperclassman who, like, blossoms late. That's, that's how that award would typically go. Yeah, Eichenberg's the first person that comes to my mind. Uh, man, I'm, try I'm trying to think who else, because on the offensive yeah. side, it's like, who who else can, like, have a huge improvement <laughs> compared to last year because of how great the offense was. So your, your mind immediately goes to the defensive side and, I, you're, you're right, Jared, your first mind, when you think of defense, it's the linebackers, but maybe, um, maybe it could be one of the safeties, maybe Court Williams, perhaps. Yeah. Problem, problem is with the safeties, you're going to have 
a guy who transferred in. You have Ronnie Hickman, who is already great. You'll mm-hmm. have Josh Proctor, who didn't play last year. You know what I mean? So I think it's Eichenberg and Zach Harrison, I think, are the two guys, I would say. Um, Fair I'm, I'll tip. I, I think I'll go with Eichenberg personally. But if you want to say Zach Harrison, I won't disagree with you. Yeah. Off, who will be the offensive MVP? Uh, I know, I know about that about a guard. I'd love it, Nomad. I would. Yeah. Um, I know that who will most likely be the Heisman. We both said CJ Stroud, but you know who will be the offensive MVP? I don't know. I would say JSN. I, I know that. I know that um, Stroud will get the will get the votes. I agree, Austin. He's the, he's the quarterback and all that, but just how special we've seen JSN the the last two games that he played. I, I'll go with JSN here. I, I think he's he's just a absolute freak of an athlete. I. Again, zero disrespect to JSN, who I love, but uh, it's I think it's Travion Henderson, like a real workhorse sort of guy. And I feel like a lot of the times you'll see a situation where, like, if you have two guys. And like they they're both on the offense and they both kind of deserve it or like you see this happen in the NFL sometimes where they'll give one of them offensive player of the year and the other one, the MVP as sort of like a you know, split it up so both guys get an award sort of thing. And I feel like it's like CJ Stroud is like your Heisman, but then like your offensive MVP is Travion Henderson. Yeah. All right. What about the defensive side? The defensive MVP. Um, So we're talking about a, a situation in which there's like, who the team considers the MVP. Cause if we do like who the team considers the MVP could very easily be like Ronnie Hickman, mm-hmm. you know, Tommy Eichenberg could, uh, or, um, maybe steel chambers as nomad pointed out. Yeah. Um, it also could be, you know, a cornerback. Um, but I, here's maybe. the thing. I don't, Sorry, say it. Go ahead. Could it be Tui Malau? See, I feel like T- Tui Malau is going to be one of the guy who gets it on the other side of the MVP, which is like how the outside people would vote the MVP, because here's a guy who's going to get stats, right? I feel like I feel like Steel Chambers might be more likely to be the guy who gets stats. And I feel like um, one of the defensive ends, or maybe all the defensive ends, might be guys that get like, you know, the strip sacks and the sacks and the, you know what I mean? Um, then there's sort of like, like I said, there's like the outside MVP and the inside MVP. Um, Kyle, here's a, here's a question for you. Who's not going to get many stats this year on the defense, but is going to have a great year. Oh, uh, it is just for the chat too. I would say maybe like my first thought would be someone on that defensive tackle. Someone who just that runs stoppers. So your nose tackle doesn't typically get a lot of stats because he's just eating up blockers. So mm-hmm. that's you're not wrong, Kyle. But what about Denzel Burke? How many teams yeah. are going to go into the year and just be like, we're just not going to throw on Burke's side? Yeah. We're just not going to. Ransom? Maybe. I feel like Ransom could be in a position to get stats, though. I mean, the, the safety kind of tends to. But, yeah, I, I agree with Jared. I mean, there, there was a couple games where there's when you have the that stiller of a corner. You, you typically don't want them to have many stats unless it's really uh, on the right. INT standpoint. Uh, Kyle, next up, I have most likely to be all American now. I want this to be first team All American, not second team, not third team. First team All American. Who's most likely? All right, first team. Uh, man, it's it's tough with um, C.J. Stroud because of there's one or two other uh, quarterbacks that that he'd be competing against. There, there's only one spot. Yeah, right. Stroud might lose out to Bryce Young. 
as Austin says. Yeah, that's it feels very 50 50. Trey might lose out to Bajon. Keep in mind, though, Austin, I think they give two running backs first team All-American. So. Yes. The but Kyle, easy... what position do they give three oh, spots yeah. the, to All-Americans on? I think I think that's the to me, the most likely is going to be JSN. JSN. I think so, too. Uh, Austin also said uh, Paris Johnson Jr. And I think that's also a good call. That Nomad, is, yep. the we're not going to give enough stats. To, I I know you're kidding. I, I know. But like we're not going to give enough stats to the tight because it's again, it's a vote and stats matter. And that's how JSN was third team all Big Ten last year, because the Big Ten official stat keeping site wasn't keeping up with the stats. So that's that's why JSN got stuck on the third team last year, despite absolutely dominating the entire league last year. Mm -hmm. I know I would I think man it's I really wanted to say to him aloud but there's there's a lot of great defensive ends out there right now so that's also tough. I think JSN JSN and um and uh Paris Johnson Jr. I think are I would feel comfortable saying those two for sure I agree um, comeback player of the year, Kyle. Proctor. Yeah, that's that. That, one, that one's easy this year. I think that one's pretty easy this year. Well, Austin, that's he's already hurt my guy. Um, yes. Yeah, I know. I don't like I don't like saying it. Um, he never uh, came on. I, I don't know if that's true, especially considering like the attitudes of the guys inside the locker room. Um, but yeah, that's, I, yeah, agreed. But I think in order to be a comeback player of the year, you have to like do it on like, the field. And like, even if he does it on the field, like he's still going to do it on the field as like a third string wide receiver. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, most likely to win so far. I don't have to, I don't have to tell you that the, that an early injury could drag the entire season. I don't, I don't have to tell you that gangland. Yeah. Most likely to win end of the year position trophy. JSN. JSN. Uh, I will also, because it is technically a, a trophy, but the offensive line. We have a no struggle ruggle vote in the. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, is like, there's only one. There's only one off. There's only one trophy for the entire offensive line. Oh, that's that's why I'm saying. Well, that, that's not true. The centers have their own. So, yeah, the Remington, but yeah. but the other four. Yeah. What do you say, Jared? The are we still on position trophy? Yeah. Yeah, it's JSN all the way. JSN for right. Litnikov. All right. Uh, most likely Big Ten freshman of the year. I I don't know if I like any of the freshmen this year, um, especially to like to actually like win the Big Ten freshman of the year, which is what it says. Um, I just don't know if any of them are going to get enough playing time to put up the appropriate stats to yada, yada, yada. But if, we're, if we were to pick one, if we were to pick one. If you absolutely have to, then Austin's correct. It's CJ Hicks. I, I think that's the guy. You are not a freshman, Nomad. No, you are not. Nah, Sonny, they're not going to. Sonny Styles isn't going to get serious playing time until later in the year at best. Um, CJ Hicks could. Yeah, you're right. All right, uh, most likely do, 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 do. Oh, that one. That was a repeat. Uh, most touchdowns scored. Most touchdowns oh, oh, scored. And by the way, with... hold on. This is actually holding the ball in the end zone. Yes. Yes. I'll go with Henderson. 
Yeah, I think it, yeah, I think Henderson's the easy answer here. Mm. Yeah, Mar Marvin Harrison Jr. is actually uh, an interesting um, name that Nomad brought up. Could big target they can mm -hmm. easily see down in the red zone. Huh, I, that's that's not a bad pick it's, too. It's totally plausible that he has the most touchdowns of the, all the pass catchers. Mm -hmm. I, I would 100% yeah. believe that to happen. Um, Absolutely. You, and, and that's not to say that like a JSN can play on the goal line too. And JSN so good with the ball in his hands that he will turn a couple long touchdowns, a couple short catches in the long touchdowns. Um, was that true? Henderson had 19 touchdowns last year. 15 rushing and four receptions. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I'm definitely sticking with, um, <laughs> with Henderson, Jared. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, emerging veteran, an emerging veteran. Hmm. Anyone, you need, you need a definition on that one. Uh, so some no, Matt, you were a freshman just a couple questions ago. How are you an emerging veteran now? So I would say emerging veteran, you're either a third year or older. Um, I would say like third year on the field. I feel like the, I feel like you have to be going mm. into either your fourth or your fifth year. He's been a freshman for a while. That's funny. Um, I think this goes back to Zach Harrison again um, as a guy who maybe hasn't lived up to his recruiting stars to this point. Um, you'll say McAllister. Well, that's a that might be a nifty trick. That might be a nifty because uh, he's emerging to us. Right. Oklahoma State fans know who he is. That might be a bit of a loophole. What? What about someone who's been on the team for a while, but really trying to get on the field here? Yeah. What about Cade Stover? Is he? Is this is his third year? This is his fourth year. Okay. All right. I'll take Cade. I'll take Cade Stover. I'll take Cade Stover. You can also you can also pick um, Chambers as well. He's a fourth year too. Yeah, um, I feel like he emerged last year, um, but if he takes another big step forward, then you could also call it another emergence. Technically, McAllister, who's a who's this is his fifth year. That's what, yeah. Austin said that. I <laughs> yeah. Is he's he's only emerged from the from the perspective of Ohio State fans though. Yeah. All right. Uh, team most likely to upset Ohio State. I think we mentioned this a few episodes ago. But I also think like I think we have to like really consider upset upset here. Like I don't know like obviously it's technically an upset if Penn State beats Ohio State, right? But I think we're really talking about like like Purdue level, like Iowa, Iowa level. Where we're talking about that. I, I would I would say Iowa. Like I feel like the team has to be unranked. To, mm -hmm. I would to, say to Iowa properly qualify for this. All wait, losses wait. would be an upset in the regular season. Absolutely. Nomad. But I think like, so we're, we're so, using upset in a little bit more grandiose, like, like, a, like dropping a complete stinker of a game, like a, like a classic Clemsoning. I was about to say Jared, but I, I refrained from actually <laughs> saying it. Um, the, so you're saying the definition of of um, most likely to upset Ohio State that's unranked. Yeah, I was I was about to say Michigan because they're not going to be <laughs> ranked by the time that Ohio State beat um, plays Michigan. But there's no way Michigan's winning. So <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll stick with Iowa. Okay. Uh, most Iowa will probably to, be ranked, by the way. Most likely to take a big leap forward. Big leap forward. Uh, this kind of feels like the same as emerging veteran. It does. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but we could also, but we can include the freshman. And so maybe this is a younger guy. Okay. Um, right. Maybe we'll, that's we'll how we'll define this one. Um, 
So Marvin Harrison Jr. Almost Jordan Hancock's not a bad answer. Mm -hmm. Um, this is almost like a a new starter. Almost about, like who's going to be the most impactful new starter? Almost. How about Abuka? Abuka is a good answer. I, yeah, I'll, I'll go with Abuka. That, that's not a know, bad I'm, answer at all. I, I got, I got, I got, I got a lot of faith in Abuka in uh, special teams this year. <laughs> oh, uh, some people root for tight ends. Kyle roots for punt returners. Uh, most likely to be a better pro than college player. Um, it always seems like call this end. the race. This, this always uh, seems like a tight end thing <laughs> or linebacker. I, yeah, I was about to say we uh, this should, should almost be called like the Raekwon McMillan Award, but it's almost always a linebacker, right? Um, we're already seeing Pete. I think Pete Warner's well on his way to this. Honestly, yeah. C.J. Stroud. I mean, I don't, that's that's big, Austin. I almost feel like like the bars that that's a very high bar to clear. I think he's a generation. It'll be generational hey, in the NFL. Hey, Maybe. Hey nomad. hey, nomad. What about Kyle McCord? Uh, <laughs> I kind of want to say I Tommy Eichenberg here. Is that crazy? Um. I Austin didn't like that answer. Um, I don't know. Uh, you know, I almost may maybe want to say like Denzel Burke. Um, but he's also already really, really good here. He is, what yeah. is the criteria again that so it's 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 a player that is, you know, a pretty good guy. I almost want to say like, so this is kind of throwing out Burke and CJ Stroud, like a guy who's like a serviceable good starter in college, but then is an impact player or, you know, slightly better than that as a, as a pro. Um, like mm -hmm. I said, I, I kind of in my back of my head, call this the Raekwon McMillan award. Zach Harrison, I think is a, is a decent answer. Yeah. Um, I, I, li I like Zach Harrison actually I like that for this one. Uh, Coach most likely to leave the staff after this year. And if you're asking whose choice that is, that is totally op open to interpretation. I'm really happy you put that slash S on there. <laughs> <laughs> most likely to leave the staff after this year. I'll be honest with you. I don't have a strong candidate for this in my head. I know some people are out there going heartline. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm a fool. Maybe I'm gullible. I kind of believe him when I, when, when he says he doesn't want to leave that he wants to be at Ohio state. Buckeye Esquire says Kevin Wilson. Um, Kevin Wilson deserves to, but because of things that may or may not have happened at Indiana, um, after a generational offensive showing, he finally gets his shot. I think he should, Esquire, but I also think that if that was going to happen, it would have happened by now because they've had generational, they had a generational offense last year. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at the list here and I'm, yeah, I just have a hard time. Yeah, I, I really think Kevin Wilson would, I think is the one that really sticks out to me. Alano, you think, Austin? Get a DC job after one year? That mm. feels like a that feels like a big It does. Feels big. That feels like a big move. Yep. All right. Uh let's see here. Players player most likely to force the most turnovers. Player most likely to force the most turnover. Um I might go I might go Jack Sawyer here. Um, dude's got like real big arms, uh, fast pass rusher. I feel like he's a guy who comes around and Hickman's a good answer too, Austin, sort of that deep yeah. safety, 
he'll see what's in front of him. He'll be able to jump in front of a few. No, I don't mean DL uh, Oracle. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna start calling you Oracle. Um, the <laughs> uh, no, I don't no, think funny. I don't think Burke will get enough. I, I I don't think Burke will have enough opportunities. To be honest with you, I don't think teams are gonna throw at Burke all that often. Yeah, and I don't go- think that because th- one, I think they just aren't gonna want to throw at him, right. and two, I don't think the guy's gonna be open all that often. Um. I'll go with, I think the I'll robber's go. safety role gets a lot of picks. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with Chambers. Chambers just seems that person who's all over the field and going to make plays. So I'll go with Chambers. It's also, it's also one of the last guys you want to try and tackle if he's running with the ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Which player is most likely to be ejected for targeting? I might get a Ronnie Hickman on this one. Yeah, I'm looking at the list here. Hickman is the first one that comes to my mind here. I mean, again, you like you're playing that deep safety role. Everything's in front of you. I feel like you're putting. I feel like you are actually in like a situation in which, again, everything's in front of you. You're charging up towards a pass. I feel like you're running downhill a lot. Um, I feel like you're setting yourself up for potential ejections, potential uh, targeting calls in in that position. Oh, what's his name here? Um, (laughs) The Wisconsin kid is still in traction from a proctor hit like four years ago. See what you hit, hit what you see. Yeah, I mean, yeah, keep your face mask up and all that. Um, But sometimes legitimately, sometimes it's unavoidable. Like you can keep your face mask up. You can not spear. That's a thing you can you can take care of. But every once in a while, a guy's going to dip the wrong way. And technically, if a guy dips at the exact wrong time, you're supposed to get some leniency on that. But we've all seen it not called that way. So. So if if he were to be able to play at Ohio State, still waiting to be cleared. He's done it once already. But Parker Lewis. That's right. He ha- he has been. Uh, how many kickers get a targeting call? Not that's enough. The on- that's the only one that I know. <laughs> right. Uh, which Big Ten coach is most likely to win Coach of the Year? Do we do we even have to say it? Yeah, Austin. Austin. Austin got that. Gets that one right. That's Ference. Um Although Fitzgerald. No one was expecting anything from Northwestern, and they already have one. That's true. And in the the unknown that we've talked about a few weeks ago, Jared, about Coach Tucker. Now Tucker potentially, I I th- you know, just you know, just it's, this is a stupid obvious thing to say, but I don't know how else to say it. It really just depends on what Michigan State's like this year. You know, can, yeah. can you can you do a team of transfers two years in a row? Uh, Shano after they beat Michigan. Um, Shauna is <laughs> not a bad take, actually. I think Rutgers can take a bit of a step forward this year. They could more. They could. I'm going to say more likely next year, though. More likely Shiano coach of the year uh, 2023. All right. Which non-starter will be the Yeah, biggest? but he's not going to get to eight and four, Nomad. You're right. If he gets eight and four, he'll get coach of the year. You're 100% correct, but they're not going to get eight and four. Which non-starter will be the biggest fan favorite? Ooh, we almost, this is like the DeMario McCall award. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, probably Bob. Chop is or, a good answer. Or, CJ on, Hicks is a good answer. Hold on, hold on Jared. He's yeah. a, he's he's already a fan favorite in our sleep cats already. He's a fan favorite already. Somebody already mentioned his name once in the in the chat already. Just now or um earlier, earlier. earlier. Probably about 10 minutes ago. I'm not I can't scroll 10 minutes. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> you just got everybody, everybody loves a good fullback. Uh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh Mitch Rossi, I think is not a bad answer. See, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Which three players are you taking to a bar fight? I I think there's a couple obvious ones here. 
All right. We, yeah, it, yeah, Austin yeah. Jones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nomad is once again offering his own services. Yeah, is that, Dewand is absolutely step one. Yeah, I feel like JT2 Imalau could be someone that you would want there too. Uh, Nomad says Cage. That is not a bad answer. Um, and one thing I'm gonna say this: you're gonna want a th my one thing with JTT is that he's young. I almost feel like I want someone who's who's just like maybe an athletic bigger guy. Okay, here's here's my three, Jared. It's okay. Juan Jones. Yeah, it's Tui Malau, and okay. it's Chop. Chop. Now, see here. Here's Chop. the thing. UF boxing, UFC. They all have what in common? Weight classes. I'm not taking a running back to a bar fight. <laughs> now, unless you're like, oh, but Jared, actually, he has a Taekwondo. Oh, oh OK, then I'll listen to that. JTT, Dwan and Eichenberg. See, now I feel like I feel like I want an older guy who's probably already been in a couple scraps. So I absolutely want Dwan. I think Cage is a good call. Um, okay. And I feel like Paris Johnson is a little too much of a finesse player. Um, hmm, Teron Vincent might be a good answer. I'm just trying to take some size with me. I'm going to go. Yeah, uh, I think those are my three. Those are my three. All right. Most likely to be a top ten pick. Two obvious and two obvious answers to me. Uh, I agree, there are two obvious answers, but one of them, I think, <laughs> one of those yeah. two has a real chance at one one, and that's yes. C.J. Stroud. Yep. And then Austin said the other J.S.N. Yeah. That's that's it. Most likely to make the Ohio State Michigan highlight real. So two things, two big things, hit. That, a big hit, two things, um, a big hit or a fight. See, you're not allowed to fight. Everyone tells you you're not allowed to fight. By the way, this is totally Doug Maurice's uh, observation that I'm stealing, but he's absolutely right. Don't fight. No, no, no. Fighting's terrible. Don't don't do that. But if you do, you're going to end up in, a, in the Ohio State highlight reel, the Ohio State Michigan highlight reel for the next decade. <laughs> Um, I, I feel like it's I think be like big a, hit maybe is, like a young player, a young player trying to get into it. Are you about to you going to echo what Austin already said? Is it a CJ Hicks? Oh, no, I wasn't. I wasn't thinking that. No. Well, I mean, no, maybe CJ Hicks, maybe. Yeah, like a Marcus Hall moment. Yeah. Um, Hicks is going to destroy a punt returner. I don't know how much of a fighter he is. And it just, I'm just thinking of a big guy really trying to get into it. I may be so wrong, Jared, but I'm just going to say it. But Kanye. You're a canoe. Um, hmm. I feel, I feel like I want one of the safety. I feel like one of the safeties I think is the play here. It's 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 canoe, like like Is the boat. Canoe? That, yeah, like the boat, like like okay. the boat. That's how you pronounce it. Um, right. At least I, that's what it said in the uh, spring game pronunciation guide. Um, the, but yeah, I, I I'm, I'm gonna take one of the safeties. I think I think getting a real big hit is a great way to get into the highlight reel. If you're not gonna take one of the safeties, um, then I feel like another good way is to get like a strip sack. Uh, I think is also a great way to get you into there or just a big hit on the quarterback in general. So that leads yep. me to Sawyer, JTT, um, obviously Zachary Harrison. I think I'm going to go. I'm going to go Zach Harrison here. All right. All right. Oh, uh, most improved position group. Linebackers. Like, or actually, you really could say safeties here. Yeah, uh, my first thought, safeties. 
My first thought is safeties. Yeah, no, my first thought was linebacker, but your first thought was better than my first thought. All right. Um, Because I, I, I feel like the safeties will have, because the safeties, let's be real, were a serious issue last year. Yeah. Um, And I think it's going to be one of the strengths of the defense of the team this year. Mm. Right, coach's pet. Mm. Yes, Coach it's is nomad. Pet. It's nomad. <laughs> that you know what that one actually might be nomad. No, it's it's nomad's pick. It's uh it's McCord. McCord is actually probably not a bad answer. Um, I think Bob could be an answer here. Yeah, Bob could be the answer. I could see Mitch Rossi. Mitch Rossi is not a bad answer. Um. I'm blanking on his name. Someone help me out. The walk on wide receiver. Um, Xavier. Yeah. Coach's pet. Yeah. Xavier Johnson. Um, oh, 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 oh. Hold on. Hold on. I know the answer. Those were all wrong. I know the answer. Is it Ruggles? <laughs> it's not Ruggles. Kyle, you already you already gave him an award earlier. Uh, for emerging veteran. He, uh, he got a Stover. Yes. I could see Stover. Yeah. Finish that thought, Jared. I, I, <laughs> sorry, my, my ADHD, I had to reboot for a second. <laughs> my bad. Yeah, I could see Stover. Class clown. Class clown. Uh, this one could also be called the uh, Demario McCall Award. Uh, class clown. I feel like Dwan Jones could be a could be a good answer here. I don't know. Anyone else have a good thought on that one? I don't have a great thought on that one this year. I don't either. Um. Oh, uh, this could be. Um, crap. You know, Austin, I'm going to ask you once again to be nice. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll I don't come, know. We'll come, come back, back to, to that one. Uh, and then the X factor. See, the X factor here, I think, could have been, should have been. Um, yes, Austin's right. Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't think I don't I don't know if I see him as an X fact. I just see him as like a really great starting wide receiver. Um, focus on JSN. What does wide receiver do? Well, wide receiver two do. I. By the way, he's wide receiver one. Just gonna throw that out there. JSN's. I or excuse me. I, I think like if you think about because the slot guy is always just kind of the slot guy. So it's, it's like wide receiver one, wide receiver two slot. Yeah, I, I'd submit. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, Austin, I think your boy would have been the correct answer here had he not got hurt. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. All right. Uh, those are all the questions. I still can't think of anybody for a class clown. <laughs> um, G. Scott Jr., Sure, we'll we'll go with that. He, he he does YouTube videos. He seems to like. Uh, he seems to you know he, he's kind of he is, his dad does media is a radio guy is comfortable in front of a camera. Uh, the, the the I don't think that apple has fallen too far. Yeah, so I think that might be a good answer. All right, Jared, that is all the superlatives. For 2022. Right. Do we have any Ask Sloopcast questions that we might want to... Oh, that's that's for the next episode. I'm, that I'm is, scrolling yeah. through it on here. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Cousin Jay had a question here that was from a little while ago, but I don't think we got to any last week. Uh, slowing down... Uh, rule change no, idea. Slowing down an offensive, uh, an offense with an injury, either mm -hmm. fake or real, I believe a few things can be done. So, yeah, he's talking about when like a team's going no huddle, uh, 
and a, one of the teams like fakes an injury is what he's talking about here. Um, that player can't return for the rest of the drive. I think that's a real common sense solution. Um, like icing in hockey, the offense can sub any package they want in and the defense cannot counter except bringing in same position player that was just injured. <sighs> like icing in hockey, the offense can sub any package uh, they want in and the defense cannot counter. That 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 runs contrary to the whole No. Uh I'd go it's, with it's been one. a long standing thing in football where the Oh, the, the defense gets to see the package that the offense put in and, and they get to match up accordingly. Um, I think in football where offense is already like we've made so many rule changes that have benefited the offense, that would be a step too far, uh, in my opinion, yeah. in benefiting the offense. But I think I, I, forcing a player to stay out for an entire drive, I think, yes. is a common sense solution. Yeah, I, I really like that one a lot. Don't want to give away Austin's thing yet. Get back over to the live chat before everyone gets mad at me. Um, actually, hold on. Let me let me check again over there real quick. Because I know I did ask for... Um, which scenario keeps uh, Frost next year? And what would be... It, uh, and what would it take for a mid-season firing? Now, he's on his way to a mid-season firing. Yeah. Um there's something in his contract, some sort of payout, something or other that I think executes in the middle of the season. I want to say it's like late October, early November. Uh, so don't expect him to be like, you know, be left in Ireland or anything like that. They'll they'll roll with him. I think they'll roll with him for the rest of the year, except like maybe they'll fire him and have someone else do the ball game. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's not looking good so far. Uh, over unders we're doing next episode, so I'll hold that one back. So yeah, Kyle, we might be done here. All right, awesome, awesome. Well, another year, another year down, and man, right around the corner, Jared. Football right will be here. The corner, yeah, it's it's already happening. Uh, Wednesday or no, or we're, we're probably actually doing. We're we're we moving up the Wednesday episode to Tuesday. Because we have the Thursday and Friday episodes. Uh, Stuart, we're about to do the second episode. Of course, that's a gif and tenor already. Um, the <laughs> Damn it, Nomad. <laughs> um, the God, train of thought dead. <laughs> totally, totally killed my train of thought there. Just, um, just hit us Tuesday, up, Tuesday, right? <laughs> Tuesday. We're we're gonna no Wednesday episode this week. We're we're gonna do the Wednesday episode on Tuesday this week. I think we're getting into like season mode now. Yes. Um, all right. So tomorrow, Tuesday, we're doing uh, an over under episode. The Buckeye focused over unders for the season. Um, Austin is sort of our over under king. You hear us talking to him. He's one of our mods in the chat. Uh, he's made a huge list of over unders. Um, I haven't looked at them at all yet. I have no idea what's in there. I'll be going in blind. It'll be fun. All right. So that's it. Kyle, do anything in Kyle's corner? Oh, uh, just something real quick here. Uh, the NFL. Oracle, the next episode will be in like. 10 minutes. Yeah, the, the NFL came out with their top hundred players and six former Ohio state players made that list. And they include Nick Bosa, Joey Bosa, Cameron Hayward, Corey Lindsley, Denzel Ward, and Mark Sean Lattimore. Hmm. Some interesting names missing from that list. Uh-huh. Yeah. No but, Zeke, uh, no Zeke in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, we don't, we don't have time. We don't have no. time. That's a, that's that's a, that's a here NFL top 100 guys. Why are you doing this now? 
released this list in July. Kyle and I could have fucked around, did an episode on that. <laughs> Throw us a bone. But yeah, I digress. It's time to end the all episode. Right. Uh, is that all you had for Kyle's corner? Yep. Let's end it. All right. All right. All right. Um, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by the new bomb Turks. Once again, that is the new bomb Turks. They're a punk band. They were Ohio state based punk band back in the nineties. They're amazing. They're great. <laughs> um, and, uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to the local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the new bomb Turks. <laughs>